Welcome to episode 36 of the Red Man Group. We are presented by 21 Studios. We are live in Orlando, Florida, just after the 21 convention. Uh, joining me today, our distinguished panel, we're going to go from my left to right. We've got Sam Bada, followed by Goldman Unleashed. Of course, the distinguished George Bruno, myself, Donovan Sharp, Anthony Johnson, founder of 21 Studios, Richard Cooper, of course, and Drew Bay. Today's... This particular episode, we're going to talk about something called the purple pill. Uh, we got a lot of we got a lot of guys running around who proclaim that they're red pill aware, but they're really just purple pill. In other words, they don't really buy into red pill theories, red pill thoughts. They don't really live the red pill life. They kind of go halfway, and that's what we call the purple pill. And I'd like to throw this to Anthony first. Why do you think? Why do you think people proclaim that they're red pill, but they don't really go all the way with it? More importantly, why do they why do they want to profit from it? Yeah, so I think a lot of what you're seeing lately, at least in that, you know, to narrow it down a little bit, is uh, just prof profit margins, profit seeking. They're seeing a brand take off, not just in the red pill community that we identify with and we you know, are part of, but also uh, further out, out outside of that community. So there were the brands taking off and they're like RSD. I saw yesterday put out a video for it or the day before Right. the red pill manifest or some stupid shit. And they don't have a clue what it is. They're just see, they're seizing the opportunity to make more money, and they don't give a shit about the ideas. They don't give a shit about the content, and I don't think they give a shit about the community at this point, the manosphere at large, or the pickup community, or the red pill community. So that's a really good example, and uh, that's my thought on it. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Now, Sam Bada uh, has done a couple of the audiobook versions for Rola Tomasi's Rational Mail. Sam, what are your thoughts on the difference between red pill between red pill truth and the quote unquote purple pill? Red pill truth is the truth. And the truth is, it's the only way to save men's lives. Men kill themselves five times for every one woman that kills herself. And the reason for that is that there are plenty of people like Evan Mark Katz, who made a friend of mine who is quite famous, almost commit suicide after he paid him $5,000 to give him dating advice. And uh, then Thankfully, he came around to me, and at that time, I had already narrated the first Rational Mail book by Rolo Tomasi, and everything changed for him. His life got so much better. So the red pill is a truth that tells men to improve themselves in every possible way, not just for women, but for their whole lives, because we're missing leaders as men in this country because we've been demonized for our masculinity all these years. And purple pill is a philosophy that sounds good because we've all been reared, or at least I was, to be a, a nice guy. And that's great. I'm still nice. But now, because of these men that have written these books, I have become a man for the first time in my life. So the difference is the red pill teaches you how to be a strong man that is a leader in your, in your world, in your society, and can change the whole world. Um, but the purple pill is a philosophy that tells you to be basically a wimp and being a wimp will attract women and it'll make your life so much better at work. But the truth is that's what's leading men to suicide. And that's what makes me cry when I'm narrating these audiobooks. because now that I've got some of them under my belt and I'm using my real name for the first time in my career, I have men contacting me constantly telling me those stories that y'all heard yourself about men that were on the verge of killing themselves mm. and because of the red pill, not the purple pill. Right, right. Yeah, we've talked a lot uh, about the stories that we're hearing from our attendees uh, here at the 21 convention. I kind of skipped over it at the beginning. Uh, Drew Bay, uh, I've actually had the pleasure of meeting you for the very first time. Um, talk talk to us, talk to our audience about your experience here at the 21 convention. Wow. Um, it's different. I haven't, I wouldn't say been read Pilled so much as I have been read, slow release patched. <laughs> I, I started speaking at the 21 convention, I think it was 2009, yeah. before it was uh, red pill focus when it was more Pua stuff. And from that started following Anthony and started following Rolo and Richard and everybody else. And the more I started looking into it, the more I started realizing, holy crap, um, this is... It was it was an awakening. It wasn't one of these moments where it was like, bam, and I had it. It was like a little bit over time. Uh, don't want to bore you guys with my personal stuff. but No, please do. Has, like We like to hear these origin stories. Well, yeah. it, it has made a significant difference. Um, 
uh, with uh, my relationship with my wife, um, with uh, business even more than anything else. And uh, you talked earlier about uh, pursuing excellence rather than women. Women will follow. You're a and, father too, right, Drew? Yeah, father. Actually, man, it is essential that people not only learn this, but pass this on to their kids. I'm you know, I'm going home and I'm talking to my son. He's going to watch all these videos. I've been talking with him about right. Rolo's books. I don't want to see him go through what a lot of other men are going through right now. Mm -hmm. And I think it's what what could I have been earlier if I had known this stuff when I was in high school? I want to give him those advantages. It was great. There was another guy that was here for the convention that brought his son, and I told him, you have no idea you know, how much of an advantage you have, what your dad is doing for you, bringing you here. But, uh, yeah, it's – um. This is absolute. This is not something that. Oh uh, yeah, maybe I should. Do. This is something that's mandatory. If you want to have the best life that you can, if you care about your son, you will red pill. You will show him what it means to be a man. If you care about your daughters, you will set an example for what kind of man they should aspire to. And just at home, I'm thinking about this too with my wife, and I'm telling her, you so the way that you act. You're setting an example for our son with what he should tolerate or look for in a wife later on. So, and it it has the difference is just phenomenal, phenomenal. So it's gone from yeah, I'm happy with things to this is the fucking life I want. Yeah, it's been awesome to see you make that uh, to follow the convention too for so many years now and be a part of it like this. It's, it's been amazing. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, now, Goldman Unleashed, uh, I think this is your first, uh, you did a Red Man group with us a couple weeks back, but this is your first Red Man group live. Talk about your experience here at the 21 convention in terms of, again, we'll compare red pill to the purple pill. Do you see purple pill guys? Do you see conversions happening? What do you think are some of the goals in terms of red pill versus purple pills? Are guys buying into it? Are they kind of going halfway? Are they all in? Um, what I've seen, what I really appreciate about the 21 convention, the guys are all in here. Like this is, that's the agenda. The agenda is truth. Everybody here is so incredibly diverse from different backgrounds, different personalities, who are all single-mindedly searching for the truth. And that like to see that, to be a part of this group, cause it's so rare. Right. Even there's, there's no, it's not even money based. This is on a search for truth and it's amazing. So I've seen that. So I've seen the, those guys jump all in. And it's just like, it's refreshing because I'm surrounded. I live in New York City where it's just fake bullshit right. coming at you left and right. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, the man to my left here is uh, George. I think we call him the Sultan. George mm -hmm. the Sultan. Bruno, listen, look at him. He looks like a Sultan. I think that's why we call him the Sultan. George, you're on the front lines. You do the exit interviews for all of the speakers. Tell me about your experience, man. Like, what are you seeing? What are you seeing from the attendees? What are, you know, what if some of your exit interviews in terms of the speakers, what are you learning? What are you learning? What's it been like for you so far? There are common themes amongst all the speakers. And one thing that I kept hearing from speaker after speaker is do the work. One way or the other, someone would say those three words in the interview, do the work. Right. And that should spark interest in the watchers. What is this work that you talk about? because everyone thinks they're doing their best. And for the watchers that are out there and people listening, you need to know that there's options. And I think that's what the red pill does. It gives people options. There are guys who think that the only option after a breakup and everyone goes through them is suicide or alcohol or drugs or just Doritos and, and Netflix. Sort of escape. <laughs> you know, and to know that you don't have to go there. Can you imagine your response to chaos, disorder, grief would be going to the gym instead? We're not trained like that. We're trained to self-destruct. It's the guy that says, and I've heard people say this, I couldn't live without her. I wouldn't know what to do if she left. And then guess what? When she does leave, he doesn't know what to do without her. So when you keep using those words for years and years and years, you're training yourself to fail. So doing the work means that you are training yourself to succeed. And I've seen that from one thought leader and content creator to the next. And I've interviewed you all. And you're all saying it in one way or another. You're giving men options. 
Good stuff. Donovan, if you don't mind if I hop in real quick. Yeah, good. Uh, this is your first time at the convention yourself. How, how'd that go? <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, man, um, I remember when I walked in and I went over and I touched Ed for the first time. I touched that Lattimore. We're both like, group is like, ah, I can't believe it's you. We both acted like little girls. So that was pretty cool. Um, the one, the one thing that changed everything for me happened five minutes later. Richard is up on the stage and he says, oh yeah, by the way, Donovan Sharp just walked in. And I put my hand up. I didn't expect anything. Everybody turns around and starts applauding. And I remember my vision just kind of went blurry because I'm thinking, all right, I got to be cool. I got to act like I've done this before. But to me, that was to me, that was the culmination of a lot of hard work. And it's it to me, it's really cool for people to come up to me and say, hey, you know what? I watch you every day. Uh, You know, I see you on the Red Man group and the things that you've been through. You know, your story resonated with my story. Uh, because of you, I've made these changes. Because of you, you know, I've, I've, I've sought out these changes. I'm working out more. I'm, I'm better with women, et cetera, et cetera. So I think the most rewarding thing for me is guys coming up to me and telling me that I have helped them out. Um, and Richard, I wanted to get your take on this because, and I don't know if you want to get personal with your story, but Richard was baptized by fire, just like I was, as, as a lot of you guys probably already know. A lot of men get baptized by fire over and over again, but they don't want to go all the way. They don't want to go completely red pill. They want to go purple pill. They want to figure out another way to to digest it easier. Why do you think guys just don't go all in? I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, um, yeah, you're right. So I was baptized by fire. Uh, Long story short, but basically it was like three back-to-back events for me. It was uh, Mm. divorce, dealing with uh, legislative changes in parliament that really affected my business to the point where like basically... 12 years of really hard work, like blood, sweat, and tears was about to get flushed down the toilet um, because my competitors were just uh, unscrupulous, I'd say. And um, the last but not least was, you know, another breakup. We all go through breakups in our lives. Um, And I mean, I was like 42. Was it 40? Yeah, I was around 42. I mean, I'm going to be 45 next month. And it was just like, why am I completely dysfunctional, unable to work? Um, I can't. I just couldn't focus. I couldn't work. Um, I would go to the gym, not want to pick anything up, not want to put it down. Right. None of those things. And um, <clears throat> it was just enough was enough. And it's, you know, it's the old story of, um, you know, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And I was at a men's retreat that December. And my buddy Tom was talking to me about some stuff and what's going on with your life. And I told him, you know, what was all up. And he goes, uh, you, you know, you should read The Rational Mail by Rollo Tomasi. And I downloaded the book and it's funny because as Sam was talking there, I was like, whoa, there you go. He's like shivers yeah. went down my spine because hearing you speak through the mic and your voice coming through the speakers was like listening to you narrate the rational mail. Yeah. So um, it was like it wasn't any kind of rage or anger or anything along that lines. It was just like, oh, now I get it. Right. And I mean, you know, guys that watch my channel, um, I haven't been red pilled that long. I mean, I, I've, I've probably always been like uh, kind of like a blue pilled alpha sort of thing okay yeah um but like when you actually are ready for that information to clarify the confusion that uh doesn't allow you to 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 proceed forward in your life um for me it was fast and i started making videos on my channel talking about a lot of those key elements and concepts and explaining them and people would ask me questions and i would try to you know um dissect it and give them the most valuable tools available um, so sometimes when people see me, they're like, oh, your shit's amazing. You know, you must be doing this. For-. It's like, no, man, it's only been a couple of years. It's only been recently right. that I've actually been able to comprehend these concepts. And I still like revert back to old conditioning that sure. does not serve me. And I have to catch myself constantly. Right. Right. Yeah. I think, um, my story is it's, it's similar to yours in that when I first started consuming red pill content, I didn't think back to myself, Hmm, I don't know. It looks like there might be something to this, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. No, I was all in right from the start. And I want to turn uh, my next question here to Goldman because Goldman is you're a unique individual. I mean, you can the guy looks like Indiana Jones, right? I want to reach in and I want to grab his heart, right? For anybody, <laughs> yeah, right. But but Goldman is um, he's an interesting guy, uh, and he you know he takes photographies we all know as strategies and techniques, but. Most men find the red pill through heartbreak or sexual frustration. I would actually like to know what red pilled you, or was it just a series of unfortunate events that just caused you to say, hey, there's got to be a better way? Uh, I wanted to get laid. Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, so I, I got into game. Um, I think through that I found uh, Roycey and then, uh, then Rolo. And then, like I said, when 
uh, or like you said, as soon as I read it, it was just, it hit me like this is the right. truth. Because I had my background, like I had, I studied uh, religious studies, philosophy in college. So I've always been, that's like red pill for the world. Sure. Yeah. This was red pill for sexual dynamics. So as soon as I read it, it was the first time I'd ever seen it. I was like, here it is, finally. Laid out, this is the truth. So you already knew how to play mind games, but now it was turbo mind yes. games. Yes, and then, point. yeah, and it was, uh, was life-changing. And just like very, very satisfying. Like that burden of false information on your shoulders was just gone. So there was never a halfway point. There was never, uh, maybe it was just No, like no, that. It was, as soon as I read it, especially Rolo's stuff, I was like, this is the real deal. Sam, yeah. I, did sec you I second that notion. Nice. Uh, Sam, did you, before Rollo asked you to uh, narrate his books, were you Red Pill aware as it were, or were you not familiar with his work? I mean, I had learned from some of the PUA, PUA guys in the past and spent a lot of money trying to learn that stuff, but yeah. I still didn't get it. I didn't get it. Rollo, I, I keep telling people that it's like um, narrating Rollo stuff. It's like performing words that were channeled through that man I swear from I God. Yeah. Same with uh, Ivan Throne's work. I mean, between oh Rolo God. Tomasi and Ivan Throne, basically in Los Angeles, I uh, I was invited into a bunch of think tank groups uh, years ago. And all of those guys are ridiculously successful. They started with nothing, but some of them are billionaires now, but you know, they're humble just like you are. But the fact is, is that I try to tell my, pe my friends that I grew up with, went to college with, you know, uh, how to master things in their life. Right. But all these years, I wasn't able to, to give them step by step how to do it. I just knew how to do it. But these guys have the secrets in their books on how to master everything in life that matters, that helps you to change the whole world, that's going to attract women to you, that's going to make you the leader that the kids need to see right now. Because the world, like Ivan Throne says, is dark. And we need more people to read these books because it's changed my life completely. Is it just me or when Ivan Throne talks, right? It's like he's looking into your soul. Oh, he's powerful. Like the yeah. guy is, I mean, I, I like I'm scared to look at the guy. He's going to see like all of my deepest, darkest secrets. Um, you uh, Again, you guys are watching the uh, Red Man Group uh, episode 36. We're live from Orlando, Florida. The 21 convention um, ended last night. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're doing our, our post roundup activities. We got a couple of questions here in the chat. From uh, the first one comes from Tyler Graves. He says, quote, is purple pill just an unwillingness to accept hard red pill truths? That just seems like someone is stuck in the denial phase of being red pilled. Is the purple pill any deeper than that? Joe, I'd like to start with you. Oh, I don't feel completely qualified to answer. But my impression of this is that a lot of these guys in the purple pill are like uh, pussies who grow beards. <laughs> <laughs> because they they want to have the appearance of being red pill without actually having to do the other work going through and having the content of character right it's like a image versus identity they're thinking about uh what people think of them as opposed to developing what they actually are again thinking that the beard is going to make them look manly without actually having to be Manly, it seems like right. they're stuck. They can't quite get past that particular point because they aren't willing to do the hard stuff. Again, my non-expert uh, impression of it. Hey, you're on the panel, man. Drew's, you're on the panel for a reason. Drew's background mostly is in fitness and high intensity training. Oh, yeah, okay. That well, was some speaking. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'll, good I'll, stuff. Um, a good answer. Yeah, I'll uh, hit on that if that's okay. It's you know, it's like that old adage where you like take your shot, you miss the target, and then you just kind of like paint the target around it and call it the target sort of thing. Right. Like yeah. That's, that's really what the purple pill is. It's like, it, it's, you know, it's kind of like a version of it. It's probably better than the blue pill. Yep. Um, but I mean like, it, like the origin of the red pill, blue pill thing comes from the matrix, obviously. And, and you're either immersed into the matrix or you're going to walk around sleepwalking through your life as a blue pill, uh, zombies, you know, sort of thing. So it's, it's, it's very much like a light switch. It's either on or off. I got a little bit different take on this. Uh, this company in this convention was kind of stuck in a unintentional purple pill for a long time, kind yeah. like a purgatory. <laughs> and uh, that was like he was saying, like, I think you just said it actually, purple pill is better than blue pill. No, is that's it? what I think Richard said that, but I, yeah. I nodded, so that counts. I agree so, with that to the, to an extent with the caveat of it's better, but probably a little more dangerous. It's, it's like, closer to the truth, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's kind of like a uh, double edged sword. 
But this company and me, uh, I think you would have called us Purple Pill a couple years ago for sure. I know when Rolla first saw you, it was like, oh, it's Purple Pill shit. And then we had a few guys coming in like Tanner and the private man kind of making the transition. May rest in peace. But I didn't actually know about the red pill at all. And I knew that the blue, I didn't identify the blue pill as the blue pill then, but mm -hmm. I did identify the mainstream as kind of blue pill at the time in different words. Okay. And I recognized the pickup community and seduction community was a significant step in the right direction. What was, was the like, flashpoint? When did you decide, okay, we're going to, we're going to change directions here. That was actually an email from an attendee. Uh, we had, so we had the under 21 convention, a junior convention of this in 2016, Orlando, right here on down the street, another hotel. And right after that, I gave a talk on my experience with a BPD chick, the unofficial wife, ex-wife now. And one of the attendees, so. a lot of attendees come up to me. One of them, though, was like, hey, you got to read this guy, Roll Tomasi. The name rung a bell lightly, but I was like, yeah, I think I've heard of it. I'm not really sure. He's like, yeah, I'm going to send you an email. It's about this red pill stuff. You're going to like it a lot. And the red pill as well, I'd heard of it. I'd, I'd visited it a couple of times because right. they sent a, bunch, a shit ton of traffic to our videos. But I, I never knew what it was. I was like, oh, it's some group of men that like our videos. Cool. It didn't occur to me there's a whole movement, a, right. like a some very similar pickup community. I was like, oh, they like our stuff, great. Okay, move, you know, I'm busy building business and shit. So finally, when I got that email from that guy, it was very detailed, very well put together, very well thought out. He basically, I think, identified what I needed to hear and the, the links to Rolo's book, to Rolo's work on his blog and the Red Pill subreddit and what I needed to read. And I read through it because I, I knew this guy in person. This, sure. guy, this guy's badass. And uh, basically it was that email and then Rolo's work specifically and then the red pill overall. And I was like, look at this shit. Fuck. Yeah. These are this is the tribe I want to get in. Fuck. Right. Yeah. Suffice to say you made the right decision. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Absolutely. This has been I mean, it's, it's just never. It's, we can't even. This has been going. unbelievable. This yeah. has been unbelievable. Uh, George, I'd like to actually get your take on this. Um, you're a man who has you're, you're an expert uh, in your craft. And I think I think red pill truth has a lot of a lot of mm. similarities to what you do. Um, I don't know that people would identify you as red pill per se, yet you are one of the you're one of the main cogs that keeps this machine going. What are your thoughts on the purple pill not going all the way in, trying to find another easier way to 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 sort of digest the truth and live a true life of dominance? I would say it's like going to war without having your full armor on. Wow. For instance, you can wear a a Kevlar vest, but those who are on front lines and those who are kicking down doors have a plate that's inserted yeah. in there to, to protect the vital organs. And I, I think um, purple pill men have a, they're just, they appear to be, they appear to be strong men. The beard thing like Drew was talking about, uh, add a flannel shirt to that, some tattoos, go to the gym a couple days a week. And you think these guys are just, you know, impervious. I still, I look at them and I see vulnerability. That's what I see. Purple pill is still makes you vulnerable. Now that doesn't mean you have to be a, a, a ruthless stone cold prick. That's not what we're talking about. Right. Uh, we still have to allow, we still have to love our kids. We still have to love our family. Love has to flow out of us. We have to be able to receive love. Uh, but there are people who have to be stone cold for a period of time to protect their hearts, protect their minds, because they are so vulnerable. And I like to say, you know, and that, and that usually manifests itself in the MGTOW movement. And I don't like to hammer on them too much, <laughs> a little bit, but not too much, because I say MGTOW is a nice place to visit, sometimes yes. a necessary place to visit, but I don't want to live there. Right, right. And just because you, I look at it like, uh, you know, riding a bike. How many times did you fall when you were learning how to ride a bike as a kid? Did you fall once and say, that's it, I'm done with bikes? You didn't do that. Uh, as you were, when you were a toddler beginning to walk, you fell on your bottom many, many times. And no one says, you know, this kid just isn't cut out for walking. <laughs> Let's just let him crawl for the rest of his life. And a good parent says, no, he's going to keep trying until he's up and walking on his own. And I think that's what the red pill does. It helps men get up and walk on their own, not hide behind a beard, not hide behind an image because you know, I cut hair for a living and I work with a lot of guys and 
There's a lot of crying done in the grooming studio. Oh, wow. It's pretty deep. And a lot of nerves get touched. And these aren't wimpy men. I hear their stories. I had a guy who came home from work, went to his house, opened up the front door. His entire home was empty. A note was taped on the wall, said this marriage is over. His dogs were gone. His furniture was mm. gone. But he kept his haircut appointment. Came in. Had that what the fuck just happened look on his face from two hours earlier. I saw him with that stare, that just like, what the fuck just happened? Stare on his face. I've been, and I've been cutting his hair now for about three years and watching him recover and go through hardcore beta and blue pill stages. And I'm working with him every few weeks, little by little. But I work with guys who are, my platform is such where I catch guys when their mother just dies, when they find, find out their dad just died from mm. cancer, when they find the note taped to the wall that says this marriage is over. So I catch guys on that continuum of happiness. I know when their kids graduate from high school. I know when, when they get a bad diagnosis. So I've been hearing it all for decades. And for me, giving men options, I always like to say this. I ask questions more than give answers. Okay. And in some of my training, which I worked for 22 years in another field before I cut hair, one of my slogans was gather data, give hope. Gather data, give hope in that order. And some people would say to me, you're the most interesting man in the world. And I would say, that's not true. I'm the most interested man in the world and I'm interested in you and they would like people don't know how to react to that men don't know how to react to that because I don't do how, how do women react to that <laughs> <laughs> well that's part of my game being the most interested man there you in the world. go there you go yeah, I know <laughs> part of my I, I possess a unique set of skills <laughs> and if I find you I will date you, you know? <laughs> good luck from Taken. <laughs> um, I think I have the right, I have license to ask people the deep questions. How you doing? Not just, how's your kids doing? What's going on? What? I have a platform where I, where I can ask the deepest questions and I will take a towel out of the cabinet and hand it to a guy when those tears are coming down. And it happens every day. Every day. How about that? Uh, George mentions, mentioned something uh, very interesting. I think the red pill community, a lot of times uh, we're called a cult or, you know, all of these, all of these negative stereotypes. Oh, we're a hate group and we're rape apologists. And of course, anyone who knows what we're really about knows that this is far from the truth. But something that George points out is the way religion works. I think any religious organization, any religious denomination gets most of its members uh, during catastrophic events. When someone loses all of their money, they all of a sudden find Jesus. Uh, when when someone goes through a horrific event, they turn to God or whatever whatever religion there is. When a girl hits the wall, yeah. When it when it when a woman well when a woman hits the wall, she finds a religion called the bottle, right? So I think we I think we all know and understand that a lot of guys find the red pill again because of heartbreak or sexual frustration. Do you think that do you think that once they delve into it and and I'll ask this to you, Anthony, because you again, you're you're the founder of 21 Studios. Do you think that guys come to us with the with the intention of sticking around or just getting what they need to get out of it just in order to go get laid? Because in my opinion, don't get me wrong, getting laid is great, but the PUAs of the world or the, you know, the pickup artistries, and I think you said this in one of our exit interviews. You said that they know how to get the girl, but they don't really know how to keep the girl. Any yeah. any man can sleep with any woman on any given day. I mean, you know, the stars align and you get lucky. But if you can keep sleeping with the same beautiful women, that's where the real skill comes in. So what are your thoughts on what are your thoughts on guys coming in and just getting the whole I want to sleep with hot girls all day? Let me answer the second part of your question. I think right. those are first. And then the first one might have to be reminded of I'm running on like two hours of sleep. <laughs> so I had, a, I had some commentary I wanted to throw out that you just set me up perfectly for. So I think a lot of what you see in the purple pill, particularly with the dating coaches trying to ape the brand now, mm -hmm. the Red Pill Manifesto. And, you know, eight months oh, yeah. ago, it was uh, that Todd, RSD Todd guy doing like, this is the Red Pill. 
It was like complete nonsense and nothing to do with it. So I think a lot of what you see with those kind of pickup coaches today, them aping the brand, you see what I think is called like pickup bravado. Mm. So they will have these flashy skills where they show these guys who are like total betas and have zero game. The guy, these guys are super impressed by make guys and shit like that. And these guys will bang. I'm not saying these guys don't get laid. What I'm saying is that that pickup bravado reveals that they don't understand women. They understand pickup. They don't understand women. And there's a fundamental difference in that. And I'll even go further to say that those pickup coaches, these purple pill dating coaches today, uh, RSD or otherwise, they fundamentally do not understand women. And I think that's why they act in these flashy ways and they're doing these, these outlandish videos. The Red Pill Manifesto, Red Pill, whatever the fuck. It's all yeah, nonsense. All graphics and all that. Yeah, all the graphics. Graphic and and all, yeah. Yeah, I think even Owen Cook got involved with one once with the Todd one. It's oh, like boy. he knew Rollo's work. He knew about the Red Pill. He had every chance to correct that video. And, you know, Todd, like, you're not doing this right. He didn't give a shit. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out there that a lot of these guys aping the brand, it's this, it's this bravado and it's, it's fake. The kind of like George was talking about. It's the appearance of alphaness and it's, it's alphaness in the, in the, you know, so they're working hypergamy in a certain way, but it's very narrow and very limited and they don't understand women. You know, what's um, interesting. I was just kind of sitting here thinking about it. It's, um, you know, all these guys that have been led to the red pill usually get there through some form of blunt trauma, right? Yeah. And um, I don't know if these purple pill coaches have had that rite of passage yet. Mm. You know, if you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh yeah. So, they're probably looking at it more from the perspective of like profiteering. Yep. Uh, it's a business. Let's showcase our glamorous sort of way of life. Let's get SEO thing. off Richard's channel because we have yeah. like film title. Yeah, yeah, or... exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But um, but I mean, like all the guys that that, that have been here this weekend, speakers, mm-hmm. um, you know, especially they're, you know, they just want to give something back. I mean, none of us work for free. I mean, like we obviously charge for our time whenever we're creating something, whether it's you know like a, a ticket to attend the conference or anything like that. But um, I think that the basis, like like the base operating system, yeah. if you will, like our belief system is to actually help dudes. Like like we actually want to help people. Yeah, um, I want to add to that because when I got into a game, which led me to the red pill, like I was getting laid a lot, which was awesome. But it was like, I don't think I could have been able to, I didn't have the tools to have a relationship with a beautiful mm-hmm. woman. When I read red pill stuff and Rolo's stuff, that gave me the tools to understand women and I got into a beautiful, healthy relationship for two years. It's what I needed, but it was because I, I knew how she was thinking. I knew how to act because it was the red pill. If I didn't read the red pill, I probably wouldn't have been able to have that relationship, which really did help me grow. You've written about that on your blog too, right? Yeah. That relationship. Yeah. I remember yeah, reading I think about you that. You talked about that a couple of years ago too, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. It was very, very, it was important. Yeah. It was what I needed. What we both needed. We both grew as people. We split up, but we needed it at the time. Yeah. I mean, you know, no, no harm, no foul, I guess in that regard. My take on the Purple Hills, I think um, I think Richard hit on it. I think it was either one of you two. You guys are the same person sometimes. It's, it's kind of weird. Great um, <clears throat> I think it's I think it's definitely uh, for profiteering. And Richard, you hit it right on the head. I think a lot of these Purple Pill coaches, those guys, you can tell when when you're watching someone, you can tell when a man has been through some shit, right? You can tell when a man has fought some battles. You can tell when a man has been screwed over by a woman. You can tell when he has those battle scars. And a lot of these purple pill guys, they sell you sunshine and puppies and rainbows. And they're like, oh, you know, just think positive and everything is going to be fine. Be a little bit masculine, but don't be so masculine to the point to where you want to piss her off. Because don't be don't... bitter like those angry red oh pill God, dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, don't, you, you hear this all the time. Don't go to bed angry or upset. I, I think, and I think that I think that's dangerous. And you got a lot of purple pill guys out there, and I don't want to say any names. I don't want to give them any more publicity. I think it's dangerous for both men and women because they end up right back at square one. And listen, when you when when you see the truth and then you revert back to it, my thinking is that you end up worse than you worse than you already were before you started. So I think it's dangerous in that regard. And I think a lot of guys out there think that they're think they, they think that they're a red pill, but they really they're really not. Like they haven't really fought those battles. Yeah. Um, I've got another uh, comment here from Miami J says as long now this is actually sort of a political question as it applies to red pill versus purple pill. He says, quote, as long as we have politicians taking the feminist or fem hardline and marketing to fems and SJWs, it will be very hard to eradicate. How do we end feminism on a political level in government? Wow. Man, who wants to take a stab at that Shit, one? Man, that's a deep question. Take her. away women's right to vote. Oh, Jesus there Christ. There it is. <laughs> take away women's rights to yeah, vote. Yeah, it's, you know, it's what? the whole you know, responsibility, you know, authority thing. When you vote, you are asking people to represent you. What are they doing? They're passing laws. Those laws 
have to be enforced by men with guns, putting their necks on the line. If, well, if we were to staff the police and military on a merit basis, basis which is the only way we should, right. it would be purely men. Men are taking the responsibility for enforcing the laws that are voted for by these politicians. These politicians should only be voted for by people who are putting their necks on the line to enforce those laws. No responsibility. You're not putting your neck on the line. Sure. You don't get to have a say. Yeah. Let me, you may have to jump in this real quick. I have a little bit different take on it. I think so. I'm following what Drew's saying, but I think the bigger issue is that women don't have skin in the game. So then at no point in their lives at 18, at 30 and then older. So any point current in their lives or then looking back on it, they were never at a point where they could get drafted into the military. Mm. So when I vote, like in 2016, I had a little brother. I still do. He's 21 now. When I vote, I think about the candidate in a major election, general election, which one is pro peace and pro war or which now both of them could go to war, of course. Right. Sure. But which one is more likely? Which one is less likely? Which one is going to put me or my little brother in danger? I have a sister. I have two sisters as well. You guys met one of them. At no point, in, you know, I love them both to death. But at no point in their lives, when they were young or older, if they have daughters someday, those people, those citizens who have the right to vote, to exert force through vote and like Drew was talking about, through law enforcement, it doesn't, there's a major disconnect. That's why I talked about my speech this year. 1920 was the death of equality in this country between rights and responsibilities. Yep. So I'm not opposed to women voting. I'm opposed to women voting and then not having some sort of connection to military draft. I don't think women belong in the military, in combat at least, in the military otherwise perhaps, but... So there's a lot of, I don't have a solution, but I do think that Drew is hitting on there's a really serious problem and we need to have an open debate about that and free speech and discuss it because it's fucking serious. There's also that um, tried and tested method of um, you don't get voting rights unless you have property rights, Okay. Um, you know, which has been successful in the past. But, you know, like to to that question more specifically, I, I, I really don't see any circumstance unless like the shit hits the fan, the zombie ap apocalypse yeah, comes or the way. aliens invade in which we're going to see a change in uh, governance in the Western world in our lives time. I mean, you know, the government is completely infiltrated with, uh, you know, female primary social decision making and ideas. It, 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 it continues to grow. It doesn't get smaller. It doesn't contract um, like like this, like everything out there is essentially designed to indoctrinate society to be more feminized and weak so that they can control it. Um, it's not, you know, society is not what you think it is. You know, if you want to apply the red pill to politics, that's, that, that pretty much sums it up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very difficult for me to sit here as a guy and look at any political party and say, it's got the best interests of its citizens in mind. It's got the best interests of itself in mind and people that will vote for its policies and the people that vote for the retarded policies that most governments put out there are people that want bigger government, free healthcare, free welfare. It's like give them more free shit and they'll keep voting for our policies, but there's no real true benefit to society at large, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. Um, well, I don't I wasn't around for this, but I, I remember a slogan old enough to fight old enough to vote. Um, I don't know. Maybe the voting age was a little higher, but they were still drafting 18 year olds into the military. And and I'm not a historian by any stretch of the imagination, but that that little slogan had to have come from somewhere. And I took it to mean that, hey, if a kid is old enough to go overseas and fight for a country, then they should have those voting rights. So I think Anthony says something uh, you know, very poignant there. Women have to have skin in the game. If they had skin in the game, I think they would probably make better decisions. And we'll liken that to sexual prom uh, the sexual promiscuity. Even when women are having irresponsible sex, they don't really have skin in the game because of the birth control pill. Oh. Well, I'm going to clarify this, too. If women vote for a candidate and there's a war imminent in the country and the country goes to war, they're not going to die. Their daughters are not going to die. Their nieces are not going to die. Your brother's going to die. My brother's going to die. My nephews are going to die. If my father was younger or when he was younger, he would go to die. Maybe I wouldn't be born. So that's the fucking issue. So when I say skin in the game, it's like who's going to die right. if you vote and your candidates take your candidate for president, you know, commander in the military takes us to war. They don't even women say I, I met a woman recently, 30 years old, grew up in Florida, just like me, didn't have a fucking clue what the selective service was. <laughs> Intelligent, otherwise seemed sharp, articulate, did not even understand what it was. She had a brother. She had a father. I'm like, yeah. You guys, they were Americans, grew up there the whole life. At any point, they could have been drafted into the military and gotten their fucking head blown off right. or come back missing a leg or watch their best friend burn alive. 
women are not even remotely aware. They are so oblivious to this. They're not even educated on it at this point. And they're so quick to make snap decisions yeah. based on what they see on Instagram and Twitter yeah. and on TV. It's they will, just well, it's all will, based on like the kindness and the global, like you know that. <laughs> yeah, um, right. What does uh, Jack Donovan say? The Empire of Nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that, yeah. yeah, right. Um, let me. I don't. Um, I don't know if you're into the whole political thing here, George. But what what would be a solution? Of course, Drew says, "Hey, listen, take away a woman's uh, right to vote unless they want to serve in the military um, in some capacity. Okay, let them earn it. Skin in the game, exactly. Right? Skin in the game. What say you? My thoughts are, um, and the reason I ask you is because you're very thoughtful. I've I've spent some time with you. You're a very yeah. thoughtful individual. Yeah. So I want to. When I was going through divorce, my attorney. Uh, was very involved in local politics in Philadelphia. And one night after a big political meeting with the party, and it was a conservative Republican party, he was quite active, they were driving home. And I, and I am a conservative, and I'm not even sure I want to identify as a Republican as much anymore because I feel like my party left me. I'm, you know what I have? I have the values of your grandfather. That's when people say to me, what do you believe in? I said, I have the values of your grandfather. Because most people's grandfathers were a little more conservative. I don't care who you are. I don't care how far lefty or wild you are. Your grandfather probably had more common sense than you do. So that's usually my answer when people say, you know, where are you politically? But they came to a red light, my lawyer and his wife. They're coming home from a political meeting, and he looked at his wife. And this meeting went on to like midnight and he looked at her and he said, do we really want to spend more time with these people? And she said, no. And at that moment, they left being involved in politics. And then they were the original, the first family in this country to accept these lost boys of the Sudan where their parents were murdered with machetes. And there was a pack of young African men like hundreds just traveling through Africa, just eating roots and dirt and bugs, and they got rescued. And then they got adopted all over the world. So my lawyer and his wife adopted several of these, the original lost boys right. of Africa. And they decided to put their charity and their compassion and their money where their mouth is. And, and the boy, it's funny, the boys are all like, valedictorians of their and they Smart these kids. are kids that saw their parents hacked to fucking death with machetes okay black african boys who are now like they're in yale are i mean they're just incredible incredible human beings but i will never ever forget when he said do we really want to keep spending time with these people that changed me that flipped a switch inside my head and at that time i was quite politically active and I was door knocking and leaving door hangers and oh, you were that talking, guy, yeah. you know, I, you know, I wasn't a bumper sticker guy <clears throat> and, but I will tell you this <clears throat> at that moment, and th this was 15 years ago, I left the world of being politically active right now. I am politi politically active in one way, how I flip a lever once I'm in the voting booth for me, when it's time to vote, I vote my conscience in that booth, and that's what I do. And I vote based upon my values, period. What is good for the country? Okay. As a father of three children, what's going to be good for my children? I know I'm not going to be here. They're going to outlive me. So I want to vote for the future of my country. I might not agree with a certain candidate 100%, but I don't agree with anyone 100% on anything. Right. So, and it's not, and I don't do this, you know, the lesser of two evils thing. I don't vote that way. But honestly, I just think uh, as far as political activity, most people don't even know the issues. And we've watched some, the comedic reporters go on college campuses and ask funny questions and trick like Crowder. college students. Yeah, Crowder. Yeah, he's and good. Yeah, yeah. It's just, people are not aware of issues. No. So as soon as you're aware of issues, it affects how your finger flips levers. It's interesting that you mentioned your grandfather's way of voting, your grandfather's you know political view, because my because my granddad. I mean, I I was born in England. My uh, you know half my family's from there. Um, you know, he always used to say that it's it's better to vote 
on the conservative side because they're least likely to fuck things up. Um, <laughs> and I think it's true. I mean, you know, whether it's conservative, like, you know, for me, it's like viewing things kind of conservative, maybe libertarian sort of thing. Um, but like smaller government, lower taxes, like more male friendly sort of thing. So, I mean, to to more directly like answer that question, how do you vote? Because I mean, you have a voting system which is which is broken. It sucks. But I mean, you know, you still have to cast a vote because it exists. Vote for something that's got conservative values. Don't vote for socialist values. Don't vote for more government. Don't vote for you know free shit that that, that people get handed to them if they don't do the work. Like those are the things that create a weak society. I wanted to add this too to the original question. Yeah, I think we'll probably move off at some point. But um, he asked about like getting feminism out of politics and the political process. Right. It's really entrenched as we discussed yeah. on the panel and at the convention at this point. And my talk that was a big focus of it. I'll say this: I do believe it's possible. I do believe, in my personal opinion, the 2016 election was an example of that. The feminist matriarchy, you know, uh, dystopian, you know, shithole they wanted to create, that went out the window. They did not get their queen. It was not. It was her turn for yes, them. Yes, it was supposed to be a coronation, man. And her turn went right out the fucking window right. where it belonged. Right. Uh, you know how arrogant of them to even to even think that. You know, oh, it's you know, woman's turn. No, it's it's based on merit. Right. So I'll say this though: I do, I do think we're in the middle of a culture war. I think we still have free speech. We the first and second amendment are still fairly intact. Right. And I do believe they could turn the ship around, but it's gonna be culture first, then politics. Do you guys think so, that we're close to a civil war? We've asked that question before, man. Um, I don't. Not even I don't know. Close. Civil. No. Uh, listen, it, it's funny. You, a civil war sounds. Ex, it sounds extreme, but I don't know if I can. There's say a lot yes of extreme no. behavior out there, right? Yeah, like it. A lot just, of very polarizing extreme behavior. Something's got to give, man. It, it won't be a civil war because they don't have an army. They don't have the guns. They've got a bunch of yeah. spoiled brats that are well, throwing organized temper tantrums. Fence, yeah. It would be a one-sided affair, yeah. as uh, uh, Black Label Logic put it. I think we talked about this in our private chat. He said it would be a one-sided affair. I think one side would have, you know, soy ice cream or whatever. The other side would have all the guns and the muscles. Yeah. It would be it would be over very quickly. Um, <clears throat> listen, sticking with politics, uh, let's just liken this to the dating world. If a, if a guy dates an outgoing woman, right, life of the party, she's outgoing, she cheats on him. So what does he do? He overcorrects. Okay, he he goes for the quiet, docile girl. Same thing. If he dates a quiet, docile girl, she cheats on him for whatever reason. It just doesn't go right. He goes for the outgoing girl. So we've got Donald Trump in the White House and the mainstream media is doing their best to demonize him. There's a there's a movie coming out called Eleven Nine. I think it's just all propaganda. Uh, it flopped. I'm yeah. pretty sure. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure it did. <laughs> um a lot of people think that we are going to overcorrect. We're going to put someone in the White House who is the complete opposite of Donald Trump. I made this prediction on election night. Nobody, of course, nobody knows. But we're going to have the largest voter turnout in United States history come 2020. You can take that to the bank. So are we going to keep Trump in the White House or is it going or are we going to overcorrect and put someone in there who is completely the opposite? I think the behavior of the radical left, and I, don't, I won't say Democrats, because I think there's a lot of Democrats that are middle to center that are really unhappy with what's going on right now. You know, if you talk to most people about politics, you take a random 100 people and ask them, maybe three or four will have an opinion. Most of them have no clue. They repeat what the news is told. Right, them. right. Most of those people in the middle, a lot of times probably don't even vote. But I think right now, with so much more attention being paid to the issues, and especially with the kind of the reactive, almost panicked behavior of yeah. the left, yeah. I think they're pushing a lot of people that otherwise wouldn't care or were in the middle or on the fence over to the right. And provided that uh, they're able to minimize the voter fraud, I think we're going to see... Uh, Maybe not a landslide, but I think that there's a lot more people that are going to be going right because hmm. the the people on the left that are making the biggest noise are probably actually a very small percentage. I don't believe or I would like to not believe that most people, even a lot of Democrats, are nearly as radicalized or as hateful as what we're seeing from it's, it's probably a very small but very vocal yep. minority, and they're they're hurting their own party. Yeah, but the, but I mean, there's like a lot of reach with that, right? I mean, like you were talking yeah. about it in your talk with that with that um, reporter that 
What the hell did she say? She wanted to castrate boys or like eliminate something like 90% of the male population? Uh, the founder of gender studies in the United States was a woman, Sarah something, and she gave a talk in 1973 advocating for men to be reduced to 10% of the population. Like, the, what the fuck is that? I mean, you know, genocide. could you imagine That's if... called genocide. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's freaking genocide. Like, could you imagine a man publicly declaring that? Oh you my know, God, he'd be uh, hung in the village square. square. What crucified. do you call somebody with a degree in gender studies? I don't know. An idiot. Barista. Card. <laughs> <laughs> so i want to i want to add this under, i want to add the center too in terms of defeating feminism in the political uh, environment or otherwise i think and i tried to articulate this in my talk i don't know how well it hit on this specific point i believe that the manosphere well kind of like the so we talked about just now the left and say the feminists they're very vocal they're a minority a small minority right but they're very vocal and they're very intolerant they're very they make their voice fucking heard exponentially bigger than their numbers have right I think we need to do the same thing with the manosphere. And in my talk this year, that's what I was trying to advocate and kick night or kickstart and ignite. We need, we're not going to ever going to be, we're not going to red, red pill legitimately 80% of the population. It's not going to fucking happen. Right. But if we get 5%, 10%, 15%, even 20%, that would be huge. That would be a very, that would be like this room, 15% of the population of men. That'd be fucking wild. And those men with those voices would be heard and those actions would be heard and they're, their political force, even money, donating money to a candidate, getting out voting, uh, writing books, sharing their ideas with their with their newsletters and their websites and their, and their social media accounts, stuff like that. That is how I think we have to win. We have to switch from defense, which the MRAs do, and it sucks and doesn't work. It endlessly no, just, just fails. Not, yeah. Yeah. And switch to offense like, like Trump has done in politics. Get aggressive, get assertive, be intolerant, say no, say go fuck yourself, stuff like that. Hit back 10 times harder. Exactly, like said. Yeah. exactly. That's what feminists do, and it worked. We need to take a cue from them. You know, appreciate it. Thanks for showing us the way and fire back. Yeah, and use it to fuck them up. We're yeah. not a yeah, one exactly. dimensional Peacefully. community. I've been saying this for the longest time. I yeah, mean, look Red, at all of us. I mean, Red Pill is not this monolithic group of men like the what, like little rascals used to have a tree house and the sign <laughs> said the He Man and Woman Haters it. Club. It, yes. That's not like that. That's not what this is all about. As a matter of fact, uh, there was a gal sitting at the bar. Uh, on the night that everybody was coming in here mm. into the hotel. And I did not know what else was coming into town this week. So as all the attendees and speakers were arriving, we're all like hugging each other. We're happy to see each other. She says to me, are you guys here for the Pride Fest? <laughs> and I... My bad. <laughs> and I said, no, no, it's a, a, a conference um, on reclaiming manhood masculinity and uh rebuilding men and building men and she goes well that's interesting she didn't know what to think right. about that and of course this was a good time of the night as people were rolling their suitcases in because everybody that was walking in looked like a freaking navy seal so you know i mean there's there is a kind of a red pill look once there is a in, difference once yeah, once you're in it there is a look yeah, we had a lot of active duty military and retired. Yeah, so I mean, you know, sense. a lot of under arm, nice under armor shirts and muscles coming in the door, right? So she says, literally, should I feel uncomfortable? I said, honey, you're probably safer here than you are anywhere in Orlando tonight. <laughs> and there are more gentlemen per square foot here than any place in Orlando. Yeah, what I did just, Anthony say? He says, you know, I love women, but I hate feminism. I love women Spot and on. I hate feminism. And I hate passion. feminism. With that passion. Was yeah. Yes. I love I women the, too. I got that from yeah. Intendi, actually. Yeah. And I hate feminism. I get it. Yeah. I think you should, if you love women, you should hate feminism. I th I, I mean, like, feminism is anti femininity. It's, it's, yes. oh my God. It doesn't yeah. promote, yeah. you know, the it feminine hurts women. Care. It definitely hurts women. I mean, like, Rolo anybody that a, believes that it doesn't is just bonkers. Rolo does a good job saying, articulating that they want, feminists want, like, this genderless, uh, androgynous future where, like, no one, there is no gender. They're trying yeah. to erase femininity and masculinity. The, the masculinity, they, you know, tox, making, calling it toxic and shit. So stereotyping it or demonizing it is more obvious. But they do it with women too, and it's more, it's more covert. And a lot of women get sucked into that, and they get fucked up too. And then they just everybody get loses. Up. Drew, yeah. you wanted to say something a little yeah. earlier? Well, real quick on that, they're they are destroying rational femininity as much as they are masculinity. Mm -hmm. But uh, to add earlier, Anthony said that. Uh, Purple pill is probably a little better than blue, but dangerous. Mm -hmm. And with, with some of the other discussion, I was thinking what's really dangerous is the purple pill 
that presents itself as red yeah, because it men need red pill some desperately but if their first introduction to it is from somebody that's purple pill passing themselves off as red the consequences could be tragic and well, we've seen that with the stories i think right now one of the biggest concerns as and this is necessary uh, to to promote red pill is to combat any purple pill that's trying to co-opt it because they are doing yes. men a huge disservice from misdirecting them away from the legitimate red pill. It's the difference between gold and fool's gold. Purple Cyanide. pill people think that they're peacemakers. Yeah. They're, they are, they embody, can't we just all get along? Oh, they want to be in the middle. They want to be no. a bridge between. And the reality is you do have to take sides. That's right. You have to. I think the world, you hear this, uh, you hear people say not everything is black and white. Well, some of the most important things are black and white. You can't live life in a gray area. It just, it just doesn't work that way. Um, one would say that the government, because we appear to have a red pill president, that the government is now purple pilled. Um, I don't know, so to speak, I guess, I guess if you mix the red uh, with the blue, it's purple pilled. Going back to the question, is there, uh, see, I'm, I'm a cynical guy. And the way I see it, I think tides are changing, right? My girlfriend has told me about this. Jonathan from Modern Life Dating has also told me this. He says the tides, like things, times are a changing. And a guy like me, the way I feel, I think, you know what? Feminism won't be vanquished until I am dead and buried. It's going to be, it'll be three generations from now until we start to see this sort of dissipate. What do you guys think? Are the tides changing? I mean, I mean, is there a timetable? Is there not a timetable? I mean, where do we stand right I don't now? With... Any better. No. Okay. I don't see any improvement. Like I've seen no improvement. I think it's going to get a lot worse before it gets any better. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. I'm going to from speaking from being from new york yeah it's gotten crazy like you guys mentioned is there going to be a civil war soon there's a psychological war going Man, on i'm telling people. you i mean i've been literally banned from and it always starts with ideas city. too right yeah. like it always yeah. starts with ideas before there's actions yeah Talking you've been banned actions. from where from certain places certain social circles yeah. certain parties in new york just <clears throat> right. because i'm not even that political i don't care i just want the truth like if you don't talk bad about trump you're the bad guy yeah it's exactly. like it's absolutely insane and it's so a, it's getting really really bad i want to add this i think uh so i see what rich is saying but i also see what goldman's saying and my take is that the intensity that you're seeing right now like what goldman's talking about that to me is the change that is an animal this like crazy ass radical feminist like marxist crazy communist shit. that animal being backed into a corner and they're freaking out mm -hmm. so goldman does he want to be political but the fact that he even want that now that he wants to write a book on camera game you know 10 years ago that was just a book now it's a political statement <sighs> Jesus. He wants the truth. Well, that's a political statement. You yeah. know, old school shit where you could just stay neutral. Now it's not possible anymore. So my opinion, the who knows exactly what's going to happen. No one has complete certainty over this. But I think things are changing for the better. And the intensity and the tension, the tension you see in America right now and the, around the West, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we can walk out of that peacefully. No major violence. But that already has not been the case. I know there was a shooting with, uh, I think earlier this year, Steve Scalise got shot, Rand Paul almost got shot with a number of senators. Oh, stuff. the softball game. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, right. there's a lot of little things like that going on in the country. The senator and other congressmen yeah. and stuff being threatened and intimidated, protested, hardcore. Uh, that's It sucks seeing that, and it's like, holy shit. People are waking up, I think, and, and they'll see that in voter turnout. Yeah. But yeah, that's the that tension, that tension, that intensity, I think is a good thing. And that's a sign that things are about to fucking change. We're in the process of changing. And there's a battle going on psychologically, culturally. Mm -hmm. Sam, yeah, I was gonna say I can I can yeah. see you wanted to yeah. The problem is that Christians are doing nothing. I was reared at a very strict Southern Baptist church, was a virgin until I got married and all that. And um all these years in Hollywood, you know, I started out living out of my car, showering at the gym. But once I made it, Christians that I grew up with and Christians from all over the country kept sending me messages telling me, you're going to hell. And the truth is, I'm the only Christian that has actually kind of made it in Hollywood. Right. And what I do is I send the messages back or I'll call people back and say, look, you are responsible because you're not here. Look at the movie credits, the credits at the end of a TV, end of a TV show. Every job that you can think of, that is listed in the credits. I'm like, why don't you get your butt out here like I did and struggle for a long time to make it? Do the work. Because if you want to do it, you have to do the work. And I think um, 
the majority of Americans would say they believe in God. And the problem is, is that people in the U.S. that believe in God are doing nothing. And the men are afraid to vote these days. Right. They're afraid somebody's going to find out. I never talk about politics because of my oh, work Jesus, in Hollywood. Oh, yeah, Jesus. Yeah. I throw You're this shit on my Instagram, that. so. <laughs> I got good. I got women hit me up about this already. Like you're so hot and all this bullshit instantly. Anthony's yeah. totally unemployable. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, but I, you know, I'm risking everything using my real name sure. for the first time yeah. in my right. life, narrating right. these books. But the fact is, we have to. Every Christian man has to become a man, and you're not a man, even though you think you are. And you know because your wife doesn't want you anymore. But you are not a man unless you have read the books by Rollo Tomasi. I've enthroned and these gentlemen I'm sitting with. It's a fact. Let me ask the next question. I'll throw it back to you, Sam. What role do you feel what role do you feel that Christianity or religion plays in the red pill? Is Christianity purple pill? Is it blue pill? I mean, is it some shade of mauve or magenta? What do you what are you Definitely, thoughts? Definitely uh, blue and lower. Wow. Absolutely. Okay. Um, okay. Christian men are, are are weak and they're afraid. And uh, uh, you know, I tell people I fought the gates of hell for twenty years in Hollywood. They will, they will hire all Christians if all of them will work the way that we work. Yeah. You understand? Busting your butt, going years without hardly any sleep. It's just most Christians are lazy and they do a job that they don't have any passion about. And that is, as a Christian, you need to know this. If you're doing a job that you haven't dreamt of doing your whole life, you are against God. It's the truth. So it's time to do what your passion is. That's why you have to learn from these men that are the best articulators of what masculinity is. Jesus wasn't a wimp. And I also tell oh, you. Jesus was a G. Don't get it twisted. Yeah. And the fact yeah. is, I mean, uh, I don't know about you, but the first place we see Jesus in the Bible, he was at a massive party with all these world leaders, rich people, you know, people talk bad about the rich, but I want to be extremely wealthy again. Why? Because I can help more people. You know, yeah, I didn't have as much as I should have had in savings when the hit and run driver killed me because I give money away to make things happen, hire people all over the world to improve things right here in the U.S. I'm not really a particularly uh, religious guy. I was raised in the church. Um, I mean, I mean, I've told you guys before I'm in sort of a transitional uh, period, um, but. I've heard that the Bible is one of the most red pill aware books out there, yet the church seems to be blue slash purple pill. How does that change? Like, how do we change? I mean, or should we change the church? Should we let it go down in flames? Should we just enjoy the decline or should we should we get the church involved? I think more guys need to be bringing books to church, man. Just, they fall out of your pocket on the way out. Like I was saying, <laughs> the rational male accidents happen. They fall right where the Bible, thing, you know, <laughs> the, uh, the prayer thing, whatever. Church yeah. makes money. Yeah. They, yeah, most of the churches, they all want to be big. They make money. The pastor becomes a celebrity. And that's where oh, yes. we are. And, and they pander to the women to do that, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Women are the consumers. Yeah. Gentlemen, you are listening to episode 36 of the Red Man Group. We are live from Orlando, Florida, here in the uh, the the waning moments here of the 21 convention. Uh, we, of course, are brought to you by 21 Studios. Uh, we've got another, fifth, uh, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes before we can have guys start to line up. Uh, and take questions. I've actually got a really good question here in the chat by Reyes Reborn. Uh, he says, quote, how will the state of the geopolitical landscape affect the sexual marketplace two years from now? So this kind of marries politics in with the sexual marketplace. And my guess is that it probably has a lot to do with the hashtag Me Too movement. Uh, yes means yes, no means no, no me, uh, nobody knows. Um, I'll open it up to the panel. What are your thoughts? I think uh, we're going to see a lot of people that are a little bit more selective about who they date based on their political leanings, men in particular being very cautious to avoid any kind of relationship with far left radical women because of the threat of false accusations yeah. of sexual misconduct. You got to be careful now. I think you're going to see, see things like that get dicier and dicier. Uh, dating today is like total anarchy. There's no rules left. I think Me Too is not, Me Too is, I think, the most modern, you know, in the moment iteration of feminism. The worst elements of it brought bubbling into a fucking witch hunt right, right here in America. I don't even say that figuratively, like it's, it might as well be a witch hunt. Or it's, a, it's an accurate term to call it. But I think that's going to get even worse. I think Me Too now, as we've seen Rolla post some links and you know, major news sites doing it, Me Too is now going to transition into, they've been focusing on taking down men in power, CEOs, right. politicians and shit. 
you know, Judge Kavanaugh, Justice Kavanaugh, that's I think going to transition into the home and family and marriage. So you're going to see Me Too witch hunt transition now to go after husbands and fathers mm. oh with enthusiastic consent. And then soon you'll see, I think very soon you're going to see duty sex, uh, basically called rape. You know, it wasn't, well, I wanted, I didn't want to bang him, but I did. So it was rape. It's just fucking insanity is what it is. Man. So it's going to get worse, more intense. I actually saw a tweet um, from someone I can't remember. It basically said, if I had to advise my son before he goes out on the date, you know, have like a small camera and a recording device. Uh, to protect yourself at all time and goldman i think you can probably speak to this you're probably you're probably the closest version uh, of a quote pickup artist as there is how does hashtag me too affect you know uh, affect pickup game i mean i mean i mean are you scared are you worried i mean what happens have you ever been falsely accused of anything like that no because i'm super careful about it Good. it has affected it big time over the past year especially there's a tension out there like in the nightlife. So when I'm out uh, in New York, I make it, um, I just make it a point to actually bring it up in conversation. Like, oh, look at everybody's acting weird. Like right. the guys are kind of afraid to go. They're acting uh, more and more timid. So I do it in a kind of meta way, okay. just to, first of all, call out the elephant in the room. The girls like to talk about it. Of course. Uh, unless they're batshit crazy, then I don't want to talk to them anyway. Right. But the cool girls, they want to talk about it. They see the tension. They realize the guys are holding back because of this gender war that's happening. And it's just, it's a conversation I like to have to keep myself safe, A, and B, it's interesting. Yeah, I think, um, I think a, there's, to me, there's a lot to be said about that. Um, I was almost falsely accused of uh, of domestic, oh, okay, looks like we got a- Rich had to uh, take a leak. He was subbing in for AJ Cortez. Right. I AJ, realized- you ready or lefty? Yeah. He's right hand, all right. We're going to the bullpen. We've got, uh, we've got AJ Cortez, uh, personal Stop trainer uh, extraordinaire. Um, but again, Goldman, uh, I don't know if you were, um, I apologize uh, if you want to finish your thought. I was, I mean, if you, if you are aware of it and you have the conversation, okay. like okay. that's my advice. Like that's, it's kind of necessary in this day and age. Okay. Uh, AJ, uh, let's go ahead and hit you. Let's go and hit you with a, with a hard question here, man. How will the geopolitical landscape affect the sexual marketplace in two years? In two years. <laughs> He's like, ah, here we go. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show, brother. I always take a minute perspective as much as I can, a broad, as, as broad a perspective as possible. Similar to what Goldman was saying, the sexual, sexual marketplace has changed, where I've seen it myself being, there's, a def, there, there's been a different rise in tension. Uh, it's between the opposite sex, men and women interacting with each other, people being single. Uh, you basically, you have to preface your interactions now. Um, you have to lead it with the opening that, y'all, you know, there's a lot of tension. Of, what do you think about this? Uh, so you know, I, I told a lot of gentlemen that this weekend, you have to protect yourself, otherwise you're gonna put yourself at risk. That's just the reality of the situation that we live in. AJ, and what do you think about the phenomena, I think you've read about it probably, of Hillary Hillary voters banging Trump supporters? <laughs> that was kind of a thing we had in 2017. Yeah. It seems to be fizzling out. I could but, be wrong. But. Uh, people always project, but the thing that you hate the most also tends to be the thing that you desire the most to have and to be won over by. So that's sort of, that's the very much the, almost the, the classical scenario of like the, the good Christian girl that's yeah, yeah. Sec secretly a freak or the quiet girl that's um, you know a slut, uh, you know, or even the guy where he gets raised in like a you know, good household with these very eternal values, but he has these sexual proclivities that he never really expresses. Um, and the thing that you hate the most also has power over you. Mm -hmm. You have to there's always an acknowledgement there, and, and sex has a power element to it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So I don't I don't think that's gone away at all. Um, do you think we'll still see Trump voters getting, you know, Hillary voters banging Trump voters in 2020, 2021 when he wins again? Or? I, I yep. have no doubt. I of course no doubt. they will, yeah. That'll, that'll, be, will. that'll be a reinforcement of, of alphaness in a way. <laughs> Triggering. Um, that, that which is most dominant has the power sexually. Yeah, there you know, go. that never there changes. Go. Yeah, going back to the Civil War question, I have a question here in the chat. I don't know if anybody else had anything to add to that. Last, I have one thing. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I think the best investment in the next two years are cameras smaller than this. That's what it's called. Totally agree, man. Totally. And, and I, listen, man, I think it's a damn shame that we're actually sitting here having a serious discussion about putting body cameras on civilians to protect ourselves from, from false sexual misconduct. And you notice they don't call it rape anymore, right? You notice they don't really call it sexual assault anymore. They're calling it sexual misconduct. Because the, the very definition of sexual misconduct, it has a very wide, very subjective definition. Mm -hmm. We had a woman accuse, uh, what's his name, uh, Justice Brett Kavanaugh of shaking his dick in front of her. And the, the world lost its mind. She damn near cost this man his entire career because of an accusation back in what, 1982, 1983? 
And everybody took the bait, hook, line, and sinker. So it's events like these, these witch hunts, this is what this is what it is, man. And this is why a lot of people become purple pill. This is why they become low level MGTOWs. They just say, you know what? That's it, man. Like I'm done. And I can't say I blame him, man. To, 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 to sit here and think that I have to put a body camera on. I used to record all of my sexual encounters when I was in Vegas. You never know what was going to happen after. And I'm not going to get into it, but I was, I was halfway accused of domestic violence. The only reason why I didn't get arrested is because I had the wherewithal to record the ensuing conversation on my phone. And she was detained for making a false domestic violence. I could, she probably didn't spend one minute in jail, but from then on I had to record everything. But, that, you, but you would have spent 10 years. Oh dude, easy. Like that was, that was, yeah, I'm, it was, I was very, very fortunate uh, in that regard. Um, I've got a question here. This is actually an interesting question by Rhythm and Smoke. All right. Um, he says, quote, I feel women are in a civil war with each other for the identity of women. Does the panel agree? Wow, that's a good question. Uh, feminazis versus yeah. feminines. That's a very sharp observation. Um, these things, I mean, we're here this week and this past week as men. Women are having their own internal battles for, or their own internal community battles for their own soul. Uh, I've encountered that very much so. It's coming from a different background where I have a lot of female relationships where you obviously you have this element. Yes, yeah, a lot of lot yeah. of female relationships. You, you have the, you, you have this element of this radical far left feminist fem Nazi um, social justice warrior where she went to college. She got indoctrinated with Marxist ideology. She dyed her hair blue. She hates her dad now. She hates all men. Um, but she's all, it's also a mental level of mental illness because, because when you create all these categories, nothing has boundaries. There's 90, 90,000 genders. You your mental stability is dust. Right. Your mental stability is completely disintegrated. Dysfunctional. And then, at, yeah, you have that. And at the same time, you have women, whether whether they're Christian or they're just raised in a traditional household, where they're women and they like being feminine, they like being soft, and they had a good relationship with men. Uh, and they see these women. And no one hates women more than other women. Oh, no, yes. No, no one you hates women it. more than other women. Well, the knives out. Um, and you know, women can call other women's bullshit out. They can. Just like that. And they're not afraid to do it. So what, what, I, what I see happening in the longer term, which I think is overall beneficial, is that these women who are more, to say, sensible, logical, reasonable, rational, not clinically insane slash leftists. But almost. Almost. But they're, they're the ones where they're going to be the power, so to speak, because they're just they're a step ahead in the mental stability game. Uh, when you have people where you can they can fall apart mentally because you say Trump and they have a panic attack. Oh God. I, I as as, as much so as they, as much as they can shriek and and you know be in fury, I'm not really afraid of that person because you're having a breakdown by words. Right. You're not going to do anything constructive. That's why the prospect of civil war. I could see I could I see the world being a hot piece. You know it, we're not going to have outbreaks of true violence, but people are getting along you know with a great deal of friction. But uh, you know the opposing side where. It's a bunch of new males with 45% body fat with the, uh, the testosterone levels of uh, 200 nanograms. Yeah, a 10 year old boy. And then their allies are, are women who are also 200 plus pounds in corpulent with a you know, um, you know, pre diabetic. Um, first round knockout. You know, and the optics on that are terrible. And that, that's the reality of it. And they're the ones that are the most vocal. What are you really going to do? Right. Well, what are you I'll, really going to do? I'll add, on that note, let me add this. I'll say so people keep saying civil war, and it's like, what the hell would it look like today if that actually broke out in violence? I don't think you'll ever see, you're never going to see an organized, you know, military opposing the federal government in this country, no. at least with the way currently things are. Right. But I do think the worst you could see would be like a feminist version of the Rodney King riots, mm. where what you see now, this insanity, these women throwing, you know, the pink pussy hats, the violence, the screaming, the, the, all that crazy shit, that erupting in a city or a county somewhere in the, in the country, a major city, feminists is fucking losing their shit, really running off the rails and dragging in Antifa and the soy boys and all that shit. I can see that happening in Los Angeles or San Francisco. Yeah. Um, I live in California. That's pretty serious. California has those Portland. elements to it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Philly. But, I mean, but again, the, thing, oh, yeah, the, the, the irony of that is that galvanizes the opposition so yes. strongly. And that, that's what I've seen where it seems like the internal battles of feminism now is that you have the sensible women feminists where they're just absolutely disgusted with their own gender. Yeah. And now they're fighting out and they're basically just cannibalizing each other. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, it's like uh, eat or be eaten. Like George, what are your island. thoughts on this? You've got you've got women who and, and again, it's a small it would appear to be a small faction of women who are interested in holding on to true traditional femininity. But it would appear that the majority of women want to redefine femininity. It's almost it, again, it's a civil war with women. Do you see that? And I'd like to I'd, I'd like Goldman's uh, input on this, too. Because again, you guys are on the front lines out here. What are your thoughts on this? I mean, are you seeing different girls? What conversations are you having? 
I find when you have your masculinity in tune, mm -hmm. when you're a well-rounded man, I'm not a big law of attraction guy as far as the new agey kind of stuff. The but when Says you're a good-looking guy with the beard. When, when, you're, when you're a masculine guy, you're going to attract feminine women. I don't attract, like, non-feminine women you like how i said that <laughs> there you go i don't attract non-feminine women i attract women who are there's like little codes that people see you go to you know when i was swiping on the dating sites you'd see like a little american flag emoji i'm just right. like yeah you see like <laughs> hashtag 2a i'm like yeah you know right. <laughs> a lot of guys would be scared of that um you know, I do a morning show on YouTube and my coffee cup is a little snake. Don't tread on me. And the women who are my followers are like, there you go. Hell yeah. So I find as I manifest what being a man is, there are women that are so fed up with soy boys, so fed up with wishy washy guys that don't have an anchor that really it's kind of a free for all for me. I, there's like <laughs> zero issues. Mm, okay. It's like, I, I was talking earlier about options. I have more options now that the genders are polarized and the, you know, if I go to political rallies or, th I mean, my girls are just hotter than heck. They're smart. They're in shape. They're articulate. I want to be with them. I have great conversations with them. And it's, uh, you know, as opposed to the short hair, purple streak, pussy yeah. hat, yeah, yeah, right. thousand piercings kind of thing. Um, my girls are beautiful and I love them. And uh, I texted a picture of the hat to somebody <laughs> and the response was, hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My sister put one of the one on one of those on yesterday with me of her picture, an in instant. So yeah, women women like that a lot. Went viral. Uh, I think, Real I think women really viral. And, <laughs> like it a lot. And and yeah. you know the word triggering is always associated with negative things. Right. I I want to trigger positive stuff. I want to trigger hell yeahs out of people. Yeah. So I'm not afraid to. I'm not a I'm not a virtue signaling kind of guy. I just am what I am. I don't wear shit like on my sleeve on purpose. I just am. I, I'm, I'm a well-rounded guy and becoming more well-rounded as the years go on. And now I'm almost 60. I'm not a young guy anymore. And it's just nonstop for me. I have my choice. I feel, I feel more confident now with women than I ever have in my entire life. Wow. There you go, man. There you go. That's a good answer. Um, Goldman, is there a civil war going on between women? Listen, I mean, conservative girls are obviously hotter than liberals. I think that's I think that's fair to say. Uh, what say you? Um, yeah, I like to keep the politics completely out of it. But this uh, civil war, I think it, there's a separation between the weak minded and the strong minded. And I want a strong minded woman who wants the truth. Okay. And they always tend to make fun of these leftists, these feminists, mm. these crazy people. Right. And the ones who agree are like these weak-willed, weak-minded people. Kind of goes back to what we are talking about, the purple pill and the red pill. Yeah. To take the red pill and the truth takes an incredibly strong mind. You have to be a warrior. Like, it really takes mental strength to do it, to accept it into your life. The purple pill is like for the weak-minded, which there is easy. Go. Okay, that's it's an easy way out. So most people are going to go purple pill. Uh, most, if they're writing about sex and dating, they're going to go purple pill because it's easy. If girls read their stuff, they're not going to be like threatened. Exactly. Yeah. So the red pill takes a lot of strength. And with this thing going on with this mental civil war between people, it's just separating the weak and the strong minded. OK. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, start getting guys lined up in the queue. If you want to ask questions, uh, go ahead and line up there behind the microphone. We'll take your we'll take your uh, we'll go ahead and start taking your questions now. Uh, we'll also take questions in the chat if you have. If you have uh, placed a question in the chat, just understand we may or may not get to it. The guys that are actually here, uh, they're going to take precedence. So we've got uh, we've got someone here now. Go ahead. Yo, hey guys. Um, speaking about politics and stuff, like whatever you guys do in the U.S. is eventually going to splash up in Europe, mm -hmm. um, landing in the U.K., Germany, and then slowly crawling towards the east and stuff. Um, 
like I think there's like a five to ten uh, year window. Like we're lagging behind you guys a little bit. So I really guess uh, we're gonna get the whole wow. brunt of yeah. feminism uh, coming towards Europe. What's your kind of like idea for a battle plan or like how could we like handle this situation? Because we got a time advantage. It's not much, but I guess we can do something with it. Sure. I've seen what he's talking about, by the way, in Germany. But if you want to go, go ahead. Uh, so you, you got me thinking about this. So U.S. culture always disseminates itself worldwide because cultures are memetic and whatever is strong so always leads. With the United States, with the current trends of, let's just say, radical, radical feminism and sort of this leftist hysteria, I don't know if I would really see that spreading worldwide. The reason why is that it doesn't actually produce anything. It doesn't produce anything. It's very ineffective. It's actually sort of, I would argue, on this on a very basic level, it's a money loss since you're creating a generation of people who are weak-minded, non-productive, and highly reactionary. So I, you might have a weirdly sort of global filtering effect where those elements, because the world is watching America, the international sentiment that I pick up from my friends that live overseas is that the U.S. has gone crazy with this shit. And we don't want that in our country. Yeah. So rather than it be like leading where it's like, okay, we want to be like America in the 1980s and being this military superpower. We want American culture in the 1990s and this commercial material abundance. Or even 2010s. In the, in the 2000 and teens now, it's, you guys have gone absolutely insane. We don't want that in our country at all. You, you see that in China where, I forget the, I don't speak Chinese, so I forget the terminology. Uh, you see that in China and Japan where there, there's literally, there's, word, there's a word now that makes fun of leftist ideology where, oh, it's one, they basically, it's like their version of social justice warrior. Where, oh God, it's one, another one of those fucking Americans that only cares about race and identity, and they're probably ugly too. Um, and I've, and I've, <laughs> no, they're dead, dead, dead on serious. And I've seen that in other countries as well, so even in the Eastern Europe, where they see this, and it's not feminism where, oh, this is empowering. It's women there that come from these more traditional cultures where they're they're well put together, and they're feminine, and they're graceful, and you know, they haven't been corrupted that way. And they see American feminism, it's like, what is this? These women are these women are hideous and they're hysterical and they're shrieking and they got they sound like this and they have vocal fry. What are we exactly going to take from that and incorporate our own culture? It's completely unappealing. So that that might kind of die on the vine where we're at here. I think in twenty years. I want to comment as well that uh, the battle plan, as far as I'm concerned, is bringing the twenty one convention back to Europe for our fourth event. It will not be in Scandinavia this time or Western Europe. It'll be in Poland. So well, the Americans are coming, the Canadians are coming. We're late per usual, but <laughs> coming for the feminazis. All right, uh, we've got someone else. Uh, looks like his name tag says Tolo Ramasi. <laughs> Royo, 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 Royo. Royo. Yeah. I'm asking this for a friend because my voice is completely shot now. Um, just to just to sort of preface this, um, where you guys are talking about um, a civil war. Um, in my speech, I talked about how. It's a possibility that we could be coming into a civil war and not just in a gender sense. I mean, I've been posting a lot of examples of what a gender war looks like on my Twitter feed recently, and I see it more as a gender cold war right now where it's like these it's like sniping at you know, the masculine it's, 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 uh, I think it was, um, I was talking with George Bruno earlier and, uh, just in, um, recharacterizing, um, masculine characters to be more feminine. Like, uh, you take someone like, uh, 007, like, uh, the, uh, James Bond and they're, they're just, you know, they want to change that masculine archetype into, uh, a female. I mean, in some cases, literally change the character into a female. Um, that's one aspect I think of a, of a gender cold war. Uh, and so as such, it seems to me, just like you were saying a minute ago that, um, like one side of, of femininity or one, you know, one faction of women are going to be a little more leaning towards, you know, our red pill way of thinking, or you know, maybe a little bit more uh, conservative way of thinking. And then of course there's going to be the more liberal women who are going to, you know, fight that side, but it's going to end up being, uh, I don't know it's going to, there's going to be a, a dividing line between women at some point before we actually get into like, a real live civil war. So I mean, we get into something like that, but I definitely see a, a gender civil war right now. However, uh, married or not married, uh, modern, modern life dating, uh, John, uh, Texas, Sam says the left is running out of weapons. At what point do they start losing women to our side? And that's what I was just referring to. What, I mean, when there's that division line, where do you think that division line is going to start? 
I think they already have. Yeah. yeah. Not to keep monopolizing this, but I, I have a, I have a fairly, sorry, whatever. <laughs> I don't feel bad about it. I have a fairly large following at, the, at this point, and I'm always surprised that about 25% of my following is actually women. Um, and they, they won't, they never present themselves explicitly, like within the feed, like on Twitter, but I get emails constantly from women and they're either, either it's a, uh, yeah, either admiration or just like thanking me, like, thank you for saying this, like men need this. I wish more men were like you. Um, my, even my, my Twitter account, I never expected it to ever be like a dating thing, but I've gotten lots of women that they follow my feed. Are you, are you single? Um, like where can I meet men like you? Do you know guys like this is where I live? Like, how can I find someone that's more masculine? I, I think that tide has already yeah, turned, honestly. Really they give you name, address, and everything, huh? I'm sure that's true. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure he gets more than text. <laughs> a few choice pictures. Yeah, I agree with you. I think um, I think this side is already starting to get the women. Uh, listen, man, women are attracted to strength. They're extract. They're they are attracted to conviction, and it doesn't it doesn't really matter what side you're on, so long as you appear to be the strongest and most proficient the highest status, the most steadfast in your conviction, whether you are a Bible thumping, you know, Southern fried Baptist preacher in Nashville, Tennessee, or you are an atheist up in Seattle, Washington. If you are strong, women are going to follow. And that's mm -hmm. the bottom line. I want to add this too. I think women could use a little push right now uh, to get this, get that process started yeah. yep. and uh, gonna make women great again. That's right. So, Absolutely. This, this has to be, I think women are embracing this and like, you, uh, who's, you, took, you took a picture of it, George? Yeah, exactly. And she was responsive, positively, right? Yeah. I think Jack, women Jack want Donovan. to. I oh, think, yeah, yeah. I think women want to. I think that they're afraid to, I think they're afraid to sort of, come, I think women are afraid to come out of the closet as a feminine woman. I don't think yeah. it's, I don't think it's social media fashionable. Hey, yeah, I'm a feminine woman. I embrace femininity That's a good and way traditional to put it. masculinity. So. Uh, there's a social stigma to it. One, yeah. one of the accounts I follow, uh, Sarah Jean Gosney, she's like housewife, promotes you know, femin femininity. And all, everyone that always sort of comes at her and attacks her at various times, it's always other Women's. Oh, it's you, always you just want to be dude. pretty for men. Yeah, you just want to do this. Yeah, why others. do you even care about this? this? Is all social conditioning? It's it's the same stupid arguments over and over. It's it's not men. It's it's women. It's all women. Women. It's, women it's, are the it's ugly women, women hitting on pretty women. That's feminism. <laughs> that, that's feminism wrapped up in a fucking bow for you. There it is. <laughs> that's how it started. That's what it's going to be. <laughs> let's go to our next. Uh, let's go to our next question. Go ahead. Hey, gentlemen. Um, when you discover the red pill, you go through the anger. We've we talked about that a lot this weekend. We we talk a lot about the red flags in women and what to avoid, what to watch out for. I want to flip the switch a little bit. And George, you touched on it and kind of the 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 signs you look for that a woman is actually feminine and is what you're looking for. And Goldman, you talked about the two year relationship, you know, that you had after the red pill. That was that was a wonderful relationship. I'm kind of curious as to the panel, what you guys in your own life look for like what are those signs because i think there's a lot of men that are like all right i want a feminine woman like what does she look like what do they look like how do they appear or what are their signs and they could be missing a lot of those signs so i just want to hear what your your thoughts were on that i have a cool take on this because i've given this a lot of thought this year i mean been beginning now that i'm in 30 i'm starting to give it more thought so some this is like something loosely like a theory i have so it's not it's not ironed out yet but it's worth a shot look at women who are beginning to ape uh fashion trends from like the 80s but not like in some douchey, like uh, superficial way. Like their bangs are done in a way that you don't usually see. Uh, their hair's longer, it's to well taken care of, it's not overdone. They're less flashy. The colors they wear for makeup are less intense. Yeah. Uh, these are signs for women like lacking red flags and these are like light green flags in the first place. But particularly if you see them harking back to like fashion trends from back then, and then look at the way they behave, listen to how they talk, listen to what, watch the way they walk, like small shit like that right. is what you need to look for. That's my that's my best take on it right now, and then not, more obvious stuff too. But the details I think is where the uh, where the treasures at. If there's anything tre if there's anything that we find, look there. Green flags. Anybody else? Uh, yeah, my number one green flag is if I'm seeing a girl is does she bring positive energy? Does she bring joy to not only me but to other people around her? If she's always negative all the time, especially when you first meet her, I mean that's that's a huge red flag. But mm -hmm. the green flag goes up if like I just feel this positive radiance from her that's that's to me is the ultimate femininity we have an old speaker here steve maida used to say that the way you do one thing is the way you do everything and that when you're comment about positive energy reminds me of that because mm -hmm. you're right if she comes off the bat with negative stuff that's everything you're oh gonna yeah get. yeah 99 percent of it the way she orders from a waiter everything and but you everybody. see but if you see positive little details that's a good sign that's mm -hmm. how she does everything mm -hmm. it's always the little things uh one there are many many green flags and we always talk about red flags right we all know what they are gauge out ears tattoos body piercings etc um one green flag um that 
that I would put guys on notice about is her selflessness. Does she put, and it's almost like an automatic switch. Does she put the needs of others before herself? Um, how can you see that on a date, Donovan? Well, this is easy. If, you know, when, when you sit down, you know, you order whatever the case may be. And of course, I don't recommend you take a woman out on a first date for dinner, but that's a whole nother issue. But when you're out on a date with a woman that you happen to be seeing and you're looking for something, right? Like they bring your food or bring your meal and you're looking for something and she can pick up on the fact that you're looking for your spoon. She automatically reaches over and she gives it to you. Or if she sees you're about to cut up your steak, you put down your utensils and you're kind of looking around, she passes you the salt. Um, those are the women who are feminine, women who want to follow, women who want to follow men, that's a marker, um, uh, the, the, the selflessness. Women who are women who have all of those red flags are never going to do if, that. They if are I can, uh, I want to challenge you in this a little bit. Okay. So in a philosophic sense, slightly. So you're saying selfless, but in my opinion, what you're talking about is self-interest for women. A self-interest for women putting themselves first means putting a man first. If it's counterintuitive and it's kind of screwy to look or a paradox. Mm -hmm. But I think if a woman like if your girlfriend puts your puts you first, that makes her happy. Right. For her to be happiest, she has to put a man first, which takes courage. Yes. Yeah. Submission is an action. It's a choice. And I think that's how they do it. And it's very counterintuitive. because It's not as obvious. Men, we put ourselves first by what? Putting ourselves first. Right. Mental point of origin. Women put themselves first by finding a man that's worthy of putting first and doing that as fast as possible, and getting out of dating, and not fucking themselves up, getting all the trauma and shit. I will so, tell you this, you yeah. you will quickly find out. And I think that we, I think we all have enough experience here to know and understand that women are very, very good at acting as though they are traditional, acting as though they are feminine. Uh, but let me let me give you a, a one immutable truth. They can't keep up the act forever. And I think a lot of guys are out here looking for the cheat code. Hey, how do I bet a woman in 24 hours? Boop, not going to happen. Um, a woman who is truly feminine, a woman who truly wants to follow a strong leader, she can't keep up that act forever, guys. It's going to take time. It's going to take patience and it's going to take work. Uh, so you're going to have to look for these green flags. When you see these green flags, you have to make sure that they're there at all times. Just like you said, if you do a thing one way, you do that forever. So I think I think that's definitely something to uh, to keep in mind. I like to say date long, marry slow, mm -hmm. divorce fast, because most <laughs> of our problems happen when we don't date someone long enough, right. when we marry someone too quickly, and when we drag these divorces on forever and just choose suffering. Pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. Mm. And a lot of guys just stay in that pain mode forever, and they have to learn to come out of it. They do that by buying a ticket to the 21 convention. That's right. They sure, they sure do. <laughs> Absolutely. And here's how you do it. Get the Rational Mail One audiobook and cue the it audio up. version. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. cue it up to the part uh, that is the Iron Rules of Tomasi. Oh yeah, those are brilliant. Yeah, push play, and if she's agreeing, she's good. Hmm. If wow. she gets angry, she's out. And that that would screen them quick here. But before we go anywhere, I've got something for you to listen to. Just press play, right? <laughs> if you come back to the room and she's still there, then you've got a chance. If she's red, right? She looks like she's chomping at the bit to say something. All right, yeah. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. I, I just use speeches for this too. Just find like a really triggering speech from Rolo or Donovan or somebody, and say, hey, "Watch this video. Nice exactly. YouTube video." Yeah. Don't let me do. Don't let her listen to me. Let me know what you think. <laughs> I'll fuck up your whole day, regardless of what she is. All right, we got one last question uh, here, um, uh, right in front of us. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I want to come back to the earlier topic of this battle that's going on. Um, and we've assembled a, a stellar cast of guys who are at the forefront of this battle. Um, I, I'll be honest, I don't know the full history of the speaker lineup of all the previous years of 21 Convention. But do you guys think that we ought to find a woman as well that embodies these ideas and can help move move the cause forward? Because I think... You know, a lot of women are going to look up and say, oh, it's all men. I don't want to listen to them. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? And, um, and and do any names come to mind? So you're saying the 21 convention specifically getting a woman speaker? No. I would just, no. There's no well, way. Let's clarify the question. That's um, that's the question? It, it doesn't have to be specifically the 21 convention. But, <laughs> okay. but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've already heard several no's. Is it a unanimous no? But yeah, uh, what do you think, is. Anthony, Didn't since you? you're the... Yeah. I mean, they, everybody can probably put your opinion on it. I... I don't think this is the place for it, but I would strongly encourage women that have these values to put together an event for women to combat feminism and to save, the, or sorry, to combat um, 
yeah, combat feminism, and to save rational femininity from what that's becoming. They, they can put together their own event like this. I, on Twitter, we're all on Twitter, there are red pill groupies. Yes, there are. Right? Yeah. And I find <laughs> that some of the ladies that like my posts give me thumbs up, retweet, are more like-minded. And what a great, I mean, how, I think it's, I think the web is a great way to at least start the vetting process because it's better to be with someone who has shared values. Yeah. And I'm not looking for a woman to agree with everything I say, but I want her to agree with the important things, the things that are the deal breakers. And you have to uh, differentiate between your groupies uh, and the ones who are just following you to criticize you. And we have those as well. But they end up blocking us before, you know. Too much heat. Absolutely. And they, isol they take themselves out of the game. They come in and they agree and thumbs up. And then after I keep saying they can't hang in with us for very long. There's a handful that just like watch all of our tweets and and they're dropping off little by little. So but the ones that hang in there, I think. Um, admire us. They I think they do. I'll, I'll say this. Um, women can't lead. Women can't lead other women. They can't lead other women. Uh, they can't lead other men. Let's say that there was a, a 32 convention, right? The the female version of the 21 convention. That's not going to gain any. And listen, bless their, I mean, the red pill women, bless their precious little hearts for giving it the old college try. It is an abject disaster. It is a circus. It is a dumpster fire over there. And the reason for this is because women don't lead other women. It takes a it takes a strong man to build a feminine woman. You cannot leave women to their own devices. It just doesn't work that way. Because if the 32 convention were to ever jump off, it would turn into red pill women, where they're advising girls to have threesomes with their husbands uh, at his desire. Now, all of a sudden, you're advising women to flirt with your coworkers in front of your husband to get his attention. So unfortunately, the, here's the thing, though. Women inherently know what it takes to, or at least I would like to think they inherently know what it takes to keep a man. It's not like women out here are incapable of doing what's necessary to be feminine. It's just that they're choosing not to. They don't need a convention to learn how to be feminine. They're, women are born, right? Men are made, women are born. Women already know this stuff. It's just really a matter of choice. So yeah, I think I speak for Anthony when I say, is there ever going to be a female presenter or female speaker at the 21 convention? Fuck no. Thank God. <laughs> you have to, when, anytime you have men together, you have men together, there's a dynamic of brotherhood. When you bring a woman in, uh, I, I would think in a hypothetical scenario, if you we if we could truly find someone that was, if we could truly find a woman that was extremely feminine, because within the mind and the psyche, anytime a man encounters a feminine woman, she shows him everything that he is not. That's why femininity for some men is very threatening or intimidating. Because if you see someone who is beautiful and she's graceful and she's well spoken, and you know you're never going to be enough of a man for her to ever want you because you form no polarity with her. In that model, a woman can show you what you need to become. As far as bringing in a woman like that here, that would be a shit show. And that would be her coming up on stage. And even if she oh said God. some good stuff where it's like, oh, okay, yeah. My God. Half the guys in the audience are going to want to sleep with her. Yeah, uh, the other half are going to be weird. And then the, the dynamic, because it is a woman now amongst men, we all can't talk to each other honestly because we're going to start talking. There's going to be guys here who start talking, wanting her approval, or what does she think? That always happens. Mm. You put you put any woman in a group of men, she will automatically become the, both the center of attention and the center point of destruction for everybody. It mm -hmm. undermines the entire brotherhood. That's why men need to do things with other men and no women by themselves. That that works. And this and is exactly works. why women consistently try to invade male, male spaces. spaces. They come in with the intent, oh, we just want to help you see the other, the other side. No, you don't. You want to infiltrate. You guys want to be the Trojan horse. You know every swinging dick within a one mile radius of where you sit <laughs> is going to change everything. That, th I, was, this is exactly I was waiting for the swinging dick <laughs> to come <laughs> into no. this. Oh, well, the other no. fact, too, is that when the woman becomes the center of attention, now what does that do? It puts all the attention on them. They get the social validation. Oh, of, like yeah. All these guys right. want me, like me. These women always look at me. You know, so we, know this. we all know this. I'll put in my two cents on this. Uh, at this point, the 21 convention is a strictly male space. 
we do a lot of few women in girlfriends wives sisters stuff sure. like that yeah mm -hmm. but in terms of being on the now i do like a few female thinkers today and in the past ayn ren and more currently you see a woman like dr helen smith they have some great ideas and they can do some great thinking that's fantastic i support them but in terms of speaking at this convention i think you said it, it's a giant fucking hell no yeah, this right. is a male yeah. space yeah. it's a yep. male locker room no. uh you're not welcome to lead it at this level i mean I, if you want to kick ass with your own thinking your own work uh, let's talk in some other way right. and go do it but this is a male space and it's not this platform this stage is not for women to preach to men it's for men to talk with other men and figure out figure out what the fuck's going on how to fix it fix it lead the west and, and bring it to a much better future all right and with that uh that's gonna draw the that's gonna bring the conclusion of episode 36 um of the red man group live here in orlando florida um i'm gonna go across the panel um and you're gonna tell our audience where they can find you what work you're doing, websites, uh, blogs, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to start with Sam Bada there right at the end. All right, here at the convention, I've gotten a lot of questions about um, what saved my life, what has kept me alive after having a major stroke from a hit and run accident. And so I've just switched livefearless.com to a place hmm. that tells all the secrets that uh, most doctors don't even understand. And it's all very inexpensive. Just to tell you where to get what I take is mostly supplements. I've recently lost 70 pounds in the past six months. Wow. And uh, so I'm just gonna tell all, just give you access to everything. On and, Twitter, you are? Uh, Sam Botta on Twitter, S-A-M-B-O-T-T-A, and livefearless.com. Excellent. Goldman? Uh, you can find me at goldmanunleashed.com. That's where my main body of work is. Uh, there's paid for content, the real high quality stuff, my best writing and photographs. There's also hundreds of free articles. Uh, Instagram at Goldman Unleashed and Twitter at Goldman Unleash. Where can we get one of these ads? That's a secret. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Almost had him. George. People can email me. I like, I don't like just gawkers. I like interactors. So you can email me GB, my initials, GB at georgebruno.com. Contact me personally. Let's start a relationship. Let's collaborate on something. Man, that makes me sound bad. I'm getting ready to... Well, you guys can find... Well, listen, I'm not as distinguished and debonair here as George Bruno. You guys can find me on DonovanSharp.com. Go to YouTube, search Donovan Sharp. Um, I'm on weekdays, uh, weekday mornings at 10 a.m. 7 uh, Pacific. You guys can find me also on Patreon.com forward slash Donovan Sharp. I got a lot of stuff on the internet. Uh, pretty much any <laughs> social media account, you can type at Beach Muscles or at Dream. Usually it's at Beach Muscles, nice and triggering. I'm also on YouTube at YouTube.com slash 21. That's slash 21. 21studios.com, 21university.com, and the21convention.com. Okay, that's very good. AJ? Myself, um, I have a Twitter presence, AJA underscore Cortez with an S. Uh, you can obviously always find me on Twitter. I do have a website. Um, I, don't, I don't really update my website. My email list is what I email almost every day. Uh, a lot of the subjects we discussed this week and I've talked about a lot. My archetype um, presentation was from the email list. Uh, Alexander Juan Antonio Cortez, full name. That's my website. Again, the email list, that's the best place to reach me if you want to have a conversation, need help. If you want me to talk about something that you think is valid, send me an inquiry and we can talk about it. Um, and there's that's it. Like I said, that's almost daily. So that's always, you're always going to get content that way. And by the estimations of everybody on the list, it's pretty good. So. And uh, you can find me at uh, bay.com. It's just B A Y E.com. And on pretty much any social media with, just looking in uh, or looking for Drew Bay, mostly information on fitness, building muscle, losing fat, getting fit uh, in as efficient and safe a manner as possible. Okay, that's going to do it for episode 36 of the Redman Group. Uh, real quick, I'd like to uh, special thanks to Anthony Johnson uh, for allowing me uh, to participate in this. Uh, this has been an experience, man. Uh, this has been a world class event. Everything is top notch from George to the production staff, the lighting, uh, everything has been, it, it's been professional on an unbelievable level. This was, this was an unbelievable event. Thank you for having me and okay. hopefully you'll have me uh, next year. Oh, That's yeah. going to do it for episode 36. Uh, thank you guys for attending and we'll see you next year. What was your experience so far with the 21 convention? Oh, outstanding, outstanding. Professional, all across the board. Really good energy with a lot of people. And uh, I just like it because it's a very positive, uh, positive direction. This, uh, George, this, is a, this has been a first class event. It's fantastic, you guys are in a really tight ship. I've been to a lot of conventions over the course of my business career and I can tell 
when things are well run and when things aren't, and this is a very well run operation. I was very impressed. It's pretty incredible to see where Anthony's brought it, especially from last year, which is my first year here, and to see the, the upgrades he's made, it's been incredible. I've got my notebook, and with every speaker, I've written down about two or three lines mm -hmm. under each of the speakers of just just the key prime stuff. That I got. That's good. That's good. Great. It's, it's very surreal, man. I'm yeah. really enjoying it. I'm happy to live in such an era where such a thing like this is possible. I have never seen a group of guys like this, a group of 200 men who are focused, squared away, they're working on their values, just never met a bigger group of wonderful guys. It's kind of neat because I've been to a fair amount of conventions in my day, but you never see one where the guys like, uh, here you can just see Ed Lattimore talking to Tanner about boxing. Yeah. You just sit down and then you tell your boxing experiences, everybody's kind of pinging off each other. It's yeah. nice. It has been fantastic. And it's been four days of guys all on the same page, working in the same direction. Fascinating meeting some of the people, hearing their stories. You got, you got people traveling from other parts of the world to come here just to see yeah. some of the speakers. That's yeah. amazing. That's the thing that's impressed me is everybody here is very serious. Yeah. They're taking it you know, close to their heart. What a great convention. Thanks, George.